Thank you, Richard, and thank the, uh, the local organizers for um, inviting me to talk at this uh, prestigious event. So um, I'm actually going to tell you about a, a essentially it's a, a cancer that's already published um, a, as far as the, the marker paper is concerned, but I will be talking about two new data sets that we've added quite recently, um, those of the transcriptome sequencing, and that's both the messenger RNA sequencing and also microRNA sequencing. Uh, previously, these things had been studied um, at the microarray level. So just a little background about the uh, high-grade serous ovarian cancer cohort that the, the TCGA consortium has, has collected. Um, a little background that most, most deaths um, from a, uh, are, are the result of this advanced stage high-grade serous ovarian cancer. About 70% of, of all uh, ovarian cancer patients. Um, and the TCJ group had published last year this marker paper in which a cohort of 489 tumors were studied primarily at the expression level for uh, messenger RNA and microRNA, uh, DNA copy number evaluations, as well as DNA methylation. Um, and additionally, and some you've heard already from the Broad Institute, uh, this 316 cases of of tumor and normal exome sequencing to, to complement the data set. Um, fundamental messages coming from that marker paper included that uh, the disease is defined by and characterized by a very simple mutational spectrum in which TP53 mutations predominate. Uh, in almost 96, um, so almost all patients have these TP53 mutations. Um, and also characteristically high frequency of somatic uh, copy number alterations, both focal gains and, and focal losses. And th that was in stark contrast to, uh, to previous uh, glioblastoma multiforme uh, study in which uh, there was very low copy number. Uh, the aims of this study that I'll tell you about in the next 10 minutes um, are essentially the transcriptome sequencing. And to use this transcriptome sequencing, primarily the, the RNA sequence, um, to define subtypes, uh, importantly structural variants that, that could not be established well with microarray-based technologies, um, and alternative splice transcripts, to, to name but a few. So the data set is described in this slide. Uh, we received 490 tumor uh, total RNA samples from the Biospecimen Core Resource uh, Repository. Uh, these samples had been collected from 15 different tissue source sites across the world. Um, and we were able to generate RNA sequence libraries um, uh, for, for sequencing of 420 of those, all of which have been submitted to the Cancer Genome Hub and the Data Coordinating Center. Of these 420, 300 um, are what we deemed high quality um, expression data sets that pass very stringent quality control metrics. Uh, those expression profiles have likewise been submitted to the DCC. Uh, a further 485 samples have microRNA sequences, again, submitted uh, publicly available. And then the preliminary analyses that we performed on these data sets uh, are listed at the bottom of the slide here, uh, include unsupervised consensus clustering uh, to identify subtypes. I'll talk to you a little about that that the microRNA anti-correlations with the uh, gene isoform expression. Uh, very briefly touch on that. And then a little more on, on our f uh, fusion identification using two platforms, our, our in-house Transabis, uh, and then the University of Chicago's Fusion Finder uh, algorithm. So to touch on uh, subtypes, in this slide I'm showing uh, figure two from the, the ovarian marker paper published last year. Um, in this study, there were four different subtypes uh, defined, uh, corresponding here differentiated, immunoreactive, mesenchymal, and proliferative subtypes. When we perform similar unsupervised cluster analysis using our sequence-based uh, expression profiles uh, from 300 tumors, we, uh, we identify potentially two additional um, uh, groupings. 
and this NMF cluster is illustrated here with both co-phonetic scores showing uh, uh, high, high values here and the average, average silhouette width also supporting um, that there may be additional clusters to the, to the four previously published. Of course, if we then look for the uh, correspondence of the samples within this new six cluster solution to the existing four, we see four discrete um, uh, clusters that, that map uh, almost identically to, to those prior published. These are, are our clusters four, one, two, and five. But then additionally we see these two slightly smaller clusters, cluster six and cluster three, for which the samples don't map to, um, uh, uh, to a single uh, predefined locus. And so this adds some support to the fact that there may be additional subtypes within this data that we're seeing through the, through the sequencing work. Those are the two additional ones there. For, we can do, perform the same analysis for microRNA sequencing. Um, again, in the, in the consortium publication, uh, three robust microRNA clusters were identified. Um, we also see uh, uh, reasonably robust evidence for, for uh, six clusters, and here we, we're putting uh, some of the top driver microRNA signatures um, uh, onto each of these clusters. Many of them are familiar to those of you working on pan cancer um, uh, and multiple different tumor types. Um, but in this case, unlike the RNA sequencing data, we see very little correspondence between the, the novel um, cluster solution and those existing uh, previously. Uh, and clearly we need to dig deeper into this analysis to identify um, and perhaps add p-values to these uh, Bezier curves to identify whether there are enrichments between certain clusters. Um, with these expression signatures in hand, we can turn to, to ask questions such as um, the interplay between microRNA uh, and messenger RNA. And here, just to give an example, is, is um, a, a relationship that was actually published by Chad Creighton and others last year um, between this microRNA 29A and the, uh, the locus DNMT3A, DNA methyltransferase gene. Um, what we're showing here are the, the uh, expression based for, for each of the six subclusters that we've identified for RNA sequencing, uh, the expression of DNMT3A in each of those clusters. And we can see, for example, in the gray cluster, increasing uh, RNA expression. Conversely, if we look at this bottom plot, this is the expression profile for the, the microRNA 29A, and we see decreasing expression um, corresponding, so anti-correlated with the RNA. But we only see this, this trend in, uh, in cases for which the microRNA binding site is present in our isoform, and this is where the sequencing gives us additional resolution that, that, um, that may not be captured in microarray experiments. So in the example shown, the three top isoforms of this gene all contain a microRNA binding site. Uh, this shorter isoform uh, is absent and has no uh, expression correlation with that of the microRNA. Turning now to the gene fusion detection uh, within this, this cohort, um, we've applied our in-house um, assembly and analysis pipeline, Transabis, to all 420 cases and identified uh, about 4,300 4, uh, candidate fusions. In the absence of total RNA, uh, remaining total RNA for verification, we've turned to orthogonal approaches um, and we uh, have been working with Kevin White's group at the University of Chicago uh, their group have been running UC Fusion Finder on this same cohort. Um, and looking only at the intersection, we, we identify approximately 1,500 such gene fusions uh, called by both um, uh, platforms. Of these 1,500, 64 are, are recurrent, that is present in, in two or more cases. And the distribution of these is, is, is very interesting, so, uh, and really, uh, in stark contrast to other studies such as the acute myeloid leukemia study, in ovarian we see a high degree of uh, duplication 
Um, and this is consistent with the findings in the marker paper of uh, copy number, focal copy number gains and losses. Um, and so m many ar around this circos plot, those arcs that are linked in the same chromosome uh, block are essentially the result of duplication. And there are very few cases of translocation for ovarian, but you can see the density um, of, the, um, uh, of, the, of the recurrent gene fusions. That's all that's being plotted here. In contrast with AML, the very m many more in-frame fusions uh, indicated by the, the green color. And the thickness of these bars uh, is corresponding to the level of recurrence. So many more highly prevalent uh, fusion events and the result largely of translocations within AML. Um, so very stark differences. Uh, if we tease apart the ovarian fusion events into both in-frame and outer frame, um, we identify the most recurrent uh, in-frame events in this chart, and the colors here indicate events that are seen in the Mittelman database of chromosome aberrations in cancer. So those in purple uh, are known fusion events where both gene partners uh, uh, have been previously reported. Those highlighted in green are uh, where a single gene member of that gene fusion partner have been previously reported. And then the remainder in gray are entirely novel gene fusion constructs identified um, through our analysis. Uh, to draw your attention to um, uh, the, there's um, a single case of TFG GPR128, which is a known polymorphism within the database of genomic variants. Um, so the most highly prevalent gene fusion event we have uh, is in frame is, is this MECOM or MDS1 and EVI1 complex locus. Uh, and this was observed to be focally amplified in, in over 20% of the ovarian tumors in, in the TCJ earlier report. Um, of interest, MECOM um, is a target of a couple of FDA-approved therapeutic compounds uh, listed here. Um, and like I said, we've identified these uh, in-frame fusions in approximately 3% of this cohort. Uh, primarily, the, the fusion events fuse the exon 1 of MECOM to uh, an entire transcript um, of a, a novel partner. And as cartooned in this slide, MECOM and the partner genes as a result of duplication events are present on uh, chromosome 3 band Q26.2. Uh, and we have a fusion between this exon 1 of MECOM and in this particular case in, in which six patient samples contain the fusion, we have the entire transcript locus for this leucine-rich repeat-containing protein. Um, of interest, the, the five prime end of, of um, MECOM contains a 12 amino acid signature sequence, uh, which has previously been shown to recruit MAP kinases, SMAD3, and, and SUV39H1, and so uh, transcriptional um, co-repressors uh, and the like. So we've now taken the gene fusion partners for, for all 1,500 events um, and identified uh, pathways which may be um, uh, linked to these, to these genes. So of the 2,500 uh, unique genes, uh, we see an enrichment within the COSMIC database. 105 of these genes uh, are seen in, in the cancer census as causally implicated with cancer. Um, some of the pathways uh, are listed on this slide are familiar to many of you. Um, if we then remove these 105 genes from the total set, um, the, the one remaining pathway is the ubiquitin mediated proteolysis, and so, so certainly this uh, warrants further investigation. So, to summarize, we've generated mRNA seq and microRNA seq for 420 and 485 of these TCJ ovarian samples. Unsupervised clustering of the expression profiles identifies potentially additional sample groupings. And an exploration of putative microRNA and mRNA interactions identifies significant expression anti-correlations, um, including the example I provided that was previously published. Uh, in contrast to other cancers, AML being an example, uh, duplication is the primary rearrangement leading to gene fusions and is consistent with the, um, uh, the TCGA publication. 
Um, and meat confusions are the most recurrent in-frame uh, events that we've identified within this tumor type. So ongoing work includes um, the identification of recurrent partial tandem duplications and internal tandem duplications. And my colleague Lucas Swanson is, um, is here with poster number 106. I encourage you to visit. Uh, further pursuit of this MECOM, especially in light of the therapeutic um, target, uh, is warranted. And of course, um, differential expression, uh, discriminatory gene analysis, um, and further integration with existing and novel TCJ data sets uh, is, um, is, is in the pipeline. So I thank you for your attention. I thank my colleagues at the BC Cancer Agency Genome Science Center, and I'll happily take any questions. Thank you. Time for a quick question or two. <coughs> I guess, uh, so the, the correlative uh, uh, observation of the uh, large number of fusions with the overall level of genomic rearrangement in ovarian, W at what point do you say there is there's a strong causative association? You know, the, the genome is rearranged because that disease wants to see more fusions. Where, you know, where, where do you cross yeah. that? So, so certainly it's, it's key, I believe, that the TP53 is, is mutated in almost <coughs> all, if not all, um, of these cases. Um, and so genome rearrangement is clearly um, an, an integral part of this disease and quite different to many of the other tumor types we see. Um, whether the, whether the transcription fusions, I, I mean, I think it must be looked at a pathway analysis because the highest recurrency we've seen is still relatively low at, at around 3%. Um, and so whether it's a combinatorial driving of the disease um, needs further exploration. Thank you. Well, we better move on. We've got, got uh, Thank you very much, Andy. Um,